and effects in crime rates and in the black market. If only there was someone who might help explain this all in more detail. My name is Jeffrey Myron. I'm a visiting professor of economics at Harvard University. I've been studying this subject for about 15 years. It's worth pointing out that Dr. Myron supports not only the decriminalization of marijuana, but many other drugs as well. He believes there are five primary reasons why this would be a positive change to the world. My analysis is that legalization would reduce crime, first because a lot of violence that is associated with drug markets arises because those markets are underground, because they're prohibited, so the participants can't use the standard legal system to resolve their disputes, and they resort to violence instead. There's also the possibility of some further reduction in other types of, some reduction in other types of crime, such as income generating crime, because with lower prices for legal drugs, people would have less incentive to steal or engage in prostitution or things like that in order to support their drug habits. I think it would probably reduce the demand for guns by reducing the amount of violence. With less violence, fewer people are worried about their safety or worried about self-defense, and therefore they would have less incentive to want to purchase guns for self-defense. Uh, the reason that legalization would help reduce the spread of AIDS is that a lot of transmission currently occurs because people exchange, use uh, dirty needles. They use needles for injecting drugs that others have already used before them who are already had contracted HIV. In a legal market, drugs would be much cheaper, so people would have less incentive to inject. They could consume them in other mechanisms that are not as cost effective, but still would give you a reasonable bang for the buck if drugs were inexpensive. And in a legal market, uh, people would be able to buy legal syringes legally, so they'd be much less likely to want to share them in the first place. And manufacturers of drugs would try to market them in ways that were relatively healthy by having them in prepackaged syringes, disposable syringes, and things like that. Quick point of interest, estimates have run that clean needle programs for IV drug users can reduce the spread of HIV AIDS by 50% or more in that population and do not increase drug use. New York, which has syringe exchange programs and allows pharmacy sales of needles, has seen HIV infection rates cut in half. A World Health Organization report reviewing 200 studies on the issue couldn't find any convincing evidence of negative unintended consequences of needle exchange programs. A reduction like the one observed in New York, on a more global scale, could be a huge victory in both national and global fights against the disease. Despite these potential benefits, such programs are currently being opposed by the U.S. government. It would enhance respect for the law, legalization would enhance respect for the law, because uh, people would not be routinely violating laws, uh, doing something that they do not regard, and many people do not regard, as really serious offenses. We want people to respect the law, and in some cases we know that despite our best intentions there will be violations, such as the laws against murder. But almost everyone agrees that murder is wrong and should be punished and should be stopped in most instances. With the use of various drugs, a huge number of people don't see any great harm done to either the user or to other people from the use of drugs, and therefore they tend to look the other way at violations. So we now have a situation where millions of people every day are violating the law. That just tends to teach people that laws are for, are for suckers and they should violate those laws that are inconvenient when they can get away with it rather than taking the attitude of as long as the law is in place, I will obey it and only do something different, um, I, uh, only change my behavior if I can change the law. We would shrink the deficit simply because we would stop spending all the money we're spending locking people up, prosecuting people for drug crimes, arresting people for drug crimes, and at the same time we would tax the income that's generated in the drug market. Um, even if we tax drugs at rates similar to all other goods, we would collect billions of dollars uh, in tax revenue, and if we tax them at rates similar to those on, say, alcohol and tobacco, we would probably collect tens of billions of dollars in tax revenue every year. So the deficit would certainly go down because of lower expenditure and higher tax revenues. While Dr. Myron views the issues from an economist's perspective, many independently researched studies on the consequences of legalization of marijuana have recommended it in the end. An additional side benefit may be a reduction in police officer corruption. Between 1993 and 1997, the FBI detailed that, on average, half of all police corruption cases were drug-related.